Beloved, I want to take this opportunity to welcome you again to our sanctuary this morning. David the psalmist says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. The Bible says where two or three are gathered in his name, then he is in our midst. And so we have every reason this morning to be happy and joyful because God is in our midst. Let us open with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the gift of life. Thank you because you promised where two or three are gathered, you are in their midst. We want to acknowledge your presence this morning. Father, in the next few moments as we hear your word, we pray that, Lord, you speak to us in simplicity, in much power, and in revelation. We welcome your presence, Spirit of God. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The topic of my reflection this morning is about prayer. Effective prayer. Now, what is prayer? Prayer is defined as talking to God. But Billy Graham, one of the greatest evangelists who ever lived, gives us a simple yet profound definition of the word prayer. And listen to what he says. Prayer is spiritual communication between man and God. A two-way relationship in which man should not only talk to God, but also listen to him. Prayer to God is like a child's conversation with his father. Simply put, therefore, prayer is communion with God. Prayer is communication with God. The Greek word that is used to give us a deeper meaning is kononaya. Now, for communication to be complete, we all know there are two parties that should be involved. The sender of the message and the receiver of the message. And for the process to be complete, there should be a feedback. There should be a response to the message that has been delivered. But when there is communication, when a message is sent and there is no response, then we know that there is a problem. The problem could either be with the person who is sending the message or the person who is receiving the message or better still, the mode of communication that has been used. Our God is not deaf. Our God is a speaking God. He embounds an attorney, a clergyman, an author, wrote this famous quote. Four things let us keep in mind. God hears prayer. God heeds prayer. God answers prayer. God delivers by prayer. We serve a God who is a speaking God. Moses in Exodus chapter number 3 tried him. And when God sent him, he asked God, what will I tell the children of Israel? Who has sent me? And God gave him a feedback and responded and said to him, Go tell them, I am that I am has sent me. Saul, who later became Paul, a man whom God used greatly, also tried him on his way to Damascus. The Bible says he had an encounter with this God and he asked a question, Who are you, Lord? And God gave a response. And this is what he said. I am Jesus whom you persecute. 
We serve a God who hears prayer and a God who answers prayer. But the greatest question now comes, why is it that any time we go to the place of prayer, there is no response? Why is it that when we pray, heaven is silent? Does it mean it is God who has a problem? Or is it us who have the problem? Or is it the mode of communication that we use? A story is given of a father who was a hard working man and a man of prayer. And God so blessed him. He rose through the ranks in the particular place where he was working. And God greatly increased him in material things. And one day he sat down and thought, now because I've become a great man, what is it that I can do that can really associate me with the new status that I have? And an idea came to his mind that he should go buy the most expensive car that he can find. And so he walked into this shop and bought this new and beautiful car. And he drove home to his family. When he reached home, his son was so happy and pleased and very proud of his father and asked the father to take him for a ride in the new car. And the father obliged. He took the young boy and together they rode through the streets. And the boy so enjoyed the ride and he was so very proud of his father. When they returned home, his father went to the living room and left the child out there. The child was sitting and admiring this new blessing that God had blessed them with. And he didn't know how to express how grateful he is and how proud he is to the father. So he thought, what am I going to do? He took a metallic rod that he could find and went to the side of the car and inscribed the, the words, Daddy. I love you. While in the living room, the father heard some strange noises. At first, he ignored. But when the noise became louder and louder, he decided to go and check what is happening. When he moved out, he saw his son with a metal rod, finishing inscribing the words in this most expensive car. And anger so took charge of the father. He grabbed what he could find. He went and pushed his son and he so severely knocked and hit his hands so hard. And the young boy cried out of pain. That is when the father realized what he had done. In his hand, he had picked up a hammer and greatly injured his son. Very quickly, he took the son and rushed him to the best hospital he could find. Took him to the best doctors he could find. And as he was awaiting the results, pacing up and down, full of anxiety, finally the doctor emerged from the operation room. And he didn't know how he was going to express it to the father, but there was no choice, he had to tell him. He came to the father and said, Sir, we are very sorry. We did all we could do. We are left with no option other than to amputate the hands of your son. Because the fingers were so broken, and there is nothing we could do. And this so hurt the father. He didn't even know how he's going to face his son again, or even face the mother. And as the story goes, because of guilt, the father went, and the worst thing happened. He ended up taking his own life. From this story, what can we learn? The father acquired this car for selfish purposes. He acquired this car so that he may mark his newfound status in the society. While the son was trying to show love to the father. James chapter 4 and verse 3 Listen to what the Bible says. 
when you ask you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures you adulterous people don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity with god therefore anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of god the first reason why we see our prayers are go and answer this because of wrong motives the wrong motives that the father had when we acquired this car how many times in this life have we chosen material things over god how many times have we chosen the pleasures of this world above the grace and the love that god has given us how many times do we miss out on the love of god this child all he did was to inscribe the words daddy i love you the father didn't even take time to see what the son was doing he missed out on the love of god any time we operate in wrong motives we miss out on the love of god and praying from such a point of reference will definitely cause heaven to be silent the second thing that we see the bible speaks in the book of luke chapter number 8 verse 9 to verse 12 luke chapter number 8 luke chapter number 18 sorry verse 9 to verse 12 the bible gives us of a story a parable that Jesus gave about a Pharisee and a tax collector. Verse 9 says to some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else Jesus told this parable a parable of two men who entered into the place of worship the Pharisee came to the altar and he prayed and asked God I am not like this tax collector a robber a murderer i do what the bible commands me to do i pay my tithes i fast twice a week and i am faithful but the bible speaks about this tax collector who looked down he could not even look up the bible says he beat his chest and this is what he said god have mercy many a times we see ourselves better than anyone else like this father god has lifted us god has given us grace but we see ourselves better than anyone else your own righteousness is a reason why heaven will go silent whenever you call to god in prayer the bible declares in the book of isaiah chapter 64 and verse 6 your own righteousness our own righteousness the bible says is like filthy rags never at any one time should we see ourselves better than others never at one time should we see ourselves more special than other people we are where we are because the grace of god has taken us there the question now comes again how then do i pray effectively john chapter number 16 reading verse 24 the bible says until now you have not asked for anything in my name ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete the bible encourages us to be a people of prayer God says until now you've not asked anything. How many times do we find time to go into a solitary place to enter into the secret place of prayer and talk to God? The Bible says ask. How do we ask? The same scripture John chapter number 14 and verse 15 the Bible says if you love me keep my commands we ask from the basis of love if we love god the bible says we will keep 
his command. When we ask God from the basis of love, heaven will surely answer our prayer. The second thing that will cause our prayers to be answered, John chapter 15 and verse 7, the Bible says, If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done to you. We are supposed to soak ourselves into the word of God. Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 15, 16, Your words were found to me. I did eat them, and they became a rejoicing of my heart. When we find the word of God and pray according to the word of God, simply what we do is that we, play, we pray in accordance to the will of the Father. And whenever we do that, it is impossible for heaven to be silent. Beloved, God encourages us to be a people of prayer. A few days ago, I came across a certain quote that was placed behind a motorbike. And this is what the quote said. Born to be a pilot, but forced to ride. Born to be a pilot, but forced to ride. And I, I got thinking about this quote. The person who wrote this quote, he so aspired to become a pilot, but the circumstances of life made him to become a rider. And so is it, so it is with us Christians. We are born to pray, but many times we find ourselves in predicaments where the devil has forced us to pray. God is giving us a challenge this morning. We should exercise our rights of prayer. We were born to pray. Do not let the devil force you to pray. With that, may God bless you and may he release upon us the grace of prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.